Hello everyone, it's the Space Chaser again, welcome to another video. So, some time ago I did a two part series about the proposals that were made in the 1980s to reintroduce trolley buses to parts of West Yorkshire and South Yorkshire. In the first part I looked at what was proposed and why it didn't happen, and in the second part I took a walk along the route of the test track that was built near Doncaster Racecourse. I'll put the links to those two videos in the description to this one. But this is a kind of update to those videos because just recently I've acquired this leaflet um, from the West Yorkshire Passenger Transport Executive, PTE for short, um, that outlines the proposals that were made in around 1984. I've also got a few additional photographs of the South Yorkshire um, trolleybus test route as well that was built in Doncaster, so I'll show you those um, as well. But first of all to the leaflet, um, West Yorkshire initially proposed to reintroduce trolleybuses to Bradford. The proposal was made in, in the very early 80s. And the logic was that Bradford had been the last place to have a traditional trolleybus system in the UK. And most of the support ports for the overhead wires were still there because they were used for street lighting as well. And the proposal was simply just to rehang the wires on a couple of the routes. And uh, the, the poles themselves met the current or the then current standards for installations. So they just put the wires back on them and reintroduced trolleybuses. They needed some government funding to do it, and unfortunately the government weren't interested. Now there's a general feeling in West Yorkshire at the time that the government were only interested in Leeds when it came to West Yorkshire. All the funding seemed to go into Leeds, all the investments, and everywhere else in the county was kind of left out. And West Yorkshire PTE felt that way as well. So they decided that the government might open the checkbook if they came up with a proposal for Leeds rather than Bradford. They thought perhaps it was the fact that the trolleybus proposal was in Bradford that was the problem. So they came up with um, a new scheme um, known as Electrobus. Uh, phase one would have been in Leeds, phase two was the Bradford um, system, and then phase three was a link between Leeds and Bradford, as you can see there. So you can see phase one in Leeds running from Middleton um, via both Cottingley and Hunslet up to Leeds city centre and then a big loop around Moortown and Roundy as well. Um, it was slightly odd that they thought this might have a chance because obviously the Bradford one was going to be done on the cheap. It was going to use existing um, support poles and things whereas the Leeds one would be a full new installation um, on a route that was about eight miles or so I think in total. As you can see from the leaflet, it was uh, going to be known as Electrobus, a uh, modern trolleybus system. So stage one mentioned there. As I say, this proposal was made in early 1984, as you can see from the um, leaflet. It was supposed to start construction in 1986 and be completed by 1989. Uh, 44 new Electrobuses would operate the network. Uh, expecting to carry 14 million passengers every year. So stage two was between Bradford City Centre and the Buttershaw Estate. That was going to use the existing support poles, um, as I said, that were already there for street lighting. And phase three was going to link Bradford and Leeds, uh, connecting through Stanningley, Pudsey, Farsley and Bramley. And that would bring the Electrobus fleet, as you can see, to 75, operating a 76 kilometre network and carrying 24 million passengers per annum. And in the longer term, it was going to be joined, they hoped, by Electroline, which was going to be a new tram system, basically. Um, that would have run to part of Middleton as well, and some roads would have had both trams and trolleybuses on the proposals. It's quite interesting to look through. I'll just uh, try and get it. So I'm getting a bit of reflection from the light there. I'll just try and get the text in there. If you want to read that, just uh, pause the video and have a read of it. As you can see, the graphic was done with this vehicle, which is quite obviously a row-bodied Leyland Olympian um, of the sort that was being delivered to West Yorkshire PTE at the time. Just been slightly modified by the artists. They've put a couple of trolley booms on top, got rid of the opening windows to make it look a bit more futuristic, and got rid of the divider in the middle of the screens as well. And it's got uh, just one one windscreen wiper as well to make it look, as I say, futuristic, and a modified front end with squarer headlights. But it's quite obviously, as I say, a robotted Olympian. 
We're not quite sure what buses would have actually operated it. Never got as far as ordering any. Um, they made a later proposal to do um, a scheme in Bradford again, which actually got government funding outlined, um, as I explained in part one of the series on the trolleybus proposals. And I think by that stage they were proposing to use single deckers. But uh, again, it never happened. The, the reasons it never happened are discussed in that video, so I'm not going to go over them again. But I'll just show you the other couple of sides. You can see on the back of the leaflet there's the bit about the electro line system there. In other words, the tram. But yeah, it's a very interesting piece. I've just acquired this. Um, although the proposal was made in 1984, it says there that this leaflet was actually printed in August 1985. So it does show you that the proposal lasted for quite some time. I think it was first made in the very early months of 1984, but about 18 months later on this leaflet was done. So they were still uh, proposing to do it there and they're getting as far as doing publicity uh, like this for it as well. So I'll just show you a couple of shots now of the test track in Doncaster. Again, I've acquired these photos after I did the um, last couple of videos. You can see there the Dennis Dominator trolley bus that South Yorkshire Passenger Transport Executive took delivery of. And there it is in its uh, as delivered all over cream livery. Just leaving the outer terminus there. And there is the same bus in its final livery that they settled on known as Electro Line in South Yorkshire. That was their uh, name for the trolley buses. And that's standing just across the road from the uh, South Yorkshire Transport Bus Garage, Doncaster Bus Garage, which is still there today. It's now um, first, it's their bus garage in Doncaster, but the, uh, the yellow frame building in the background is part of the bus garage. And that's still there today, as we saw in part two of the series I did. A couple more shots of the bus there, fleet number 2450. There it is, um, somewhere along the route, again in its as-delivered cream livery. And there it is in the yard of the bus garage with some uh, more typical South Yorkshire PTE buses in the background. As I explained in uh, part two of the series, the yard had wiring, but the depot buildings didn't. The bus carried a, a small engine to enable it to move off the wires, and if it needed to go into the buildings, it dropped the booms, in other words, the poles that pick up the power. And just ran in on its engine and that just saved the potential danger of having um, live overhead wires inside the depot buildings there's a view of the actual bus garage with the um, trolley bus poles and the wiring is not there i don't know if that's i think that's when it was being constructed looking at the livery of the buses it must be when it was uh, under construction rather than when it, when it was abandoned because uh, you would expect when they abandoned it the buses would be in later livery so I'm guessing that's when it was under construction. It's a shot along the route there. You can see the race course buildings in the background. And again, just the trolley poles. Um, I'm probably guessing that was after it had been abandoned because the poles look a little bit weather beaten. So it's probably after it had been abandoned and the uh, wiring had been removed. And there's a view with the wiring in place. And just to finish off, another view um, with the wiring not there, so either under construction or after it had been partly removed. You see the span wires there that held up the um, actual contact wires, but the contact wires aren't in place. So as I say, I'll put a link in the description to this video, to the original two videos, if you want to watch those um, and see the full story. But for now, thank you for watching, take care, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.